All right. Here you go, proud declared SP. Woo! I know. It's like it's midnight with Magoo. That's what it is. Or what was the other one? Midnight after Magoo after dark. It's definitely after dark. I think it's midnight with Magoo. And maybe everybody went to sleep, so that's okay. But this is in case there's people from other countries like the guy from Scotland. Hey, hey, the wolf machine. There you go. I love it. You're here. You're back again. I just have one story I wanted to tell you. Hi, SP Tattoo Warrior and Jenna P. Hi. I, I thought of this one other story that I wanted to tell you that I think it's kind of cool. And um, I meant to kind of tag it in last time and I forgot. Hi, Tori. First time commenting. All right. Well, thank you for commenting. I appreciate that. Hooray for stories. I know. That's the thing. It's like nighttime. It should be stories, don't you think? And so that, that's what I thought. I thought this is a nighttime story. It's not really a daytime story. It's not that it's bad. It's just it seems like it's more of a story time kind of thing. Another good morning to you. Good morning, musical magpie. Okay, so thank you, first of all, to the people that donated. I really appreciate that. And someone asked me, and so I want to clarify this because they said, I don't really know how to do this. And I didn't either. So you have to kind of go to the main page and then it says for more about Tori and you click on the little arrow and that brings up Cash App and um, what's the other one called? Uh, it starts with a P. I know that. <clears throat> Wait, let me look because I know. Um, come on. What is it? You probably already wrote it down. Cash app and um, PayPal. That's it. So Cash app or PayPal, those are the two that are there. And I think Venmo too. I don't, so anyway, there you go. So this is my t-shirt from Lara FM, proud declared SP. And remember, I have to show this because every time I do, Pete Griffith in Ireland gets to take a shot if I show my SP declare. So anyway, there you go. That's me officially declared suppressive. And it does say on the back, <clears throat> like I try to remind people, because this is the reason the Church of Scientology is truly not a, a religion. Her only terminal is the International Justice Chief via the Continental Justice Chief. And neither will ever talk to me. I've tried to talk to him for 24 years. And I think it's, where is it? Yeah, here it is, it's right here, there. Anyway, that's it, <coughs> Scientology scam. Okay, so, hi neighbor Mike, <laughs> all right. Yeah, it, I know, it's got, it's got a link, you just have to click on it. Um, okay, so, what happened with Rosie O'Donnell? I'm, this is years ago. And I'm watching TV in the day, and I see her interviewing Tom Cruise. And, and I see him kind of hooking her in, right? And I get, oh my God, they're getting her. You know, they're getting her. And I, you can kind of tell when somebody's getting hooked in. And she was a big, just in case you don't know, she was a big celebrity back then. She's a comedian, and she was very popular at the time. And, um, Anyway, you can Google her and see her name and stuff like that. <laughs> you finally made it live, Nancy Drew. Thank you. Anyway, so as the proud declared suppressive that I am, I called my other depressive or suppressive pr friend, Specky Taylor, who I knew has lots of, she works with celebrities. So I said, look, I think Rosie's definitely getting hooked in. Now, backstory on that. Tony Ortega, bless his heart, had do, done an article. He was working for the New Times LA here in LA. And it was like a, a newspaper that he got out. And he did a front page ad on Andreas and I, Sympathy for the Devil, which I should bring it, but another time I'll show it to you. But anyway, so you can Google it and, and it's it's on the internet. And it's a really good article that that he wrote, right? Yeah, she, she had a TV show, Rosie did. Um, so anyway, I see they're getting her, they're getting, you know, Tom Cruise is snagging her into coming over to Scientology, right? So I call Spanky. Spanky says, you know what? I'm going to send her your article. 
on uh, sympathy for the devil. So she sends it to her. And that night I get this email. Dear Magoo, this is Roro. And, and, and I think, okay, is it Roro? I mean, you have to understand way back when, when I first escaped out, they were all over me like flies on shit. You know, it was like in the day, at night, inviting me out for things. They had my phone bugged, my computer bugged. I didn't know what was bugged, what wasn't. So I thought maybe they know, you know, maybe they heard me talking to Spanky, right? You know, I don't know. I had no idea. But I, I didn't trust it when she said, this is Roro. And I thought, yeah, it's probably Osa, right? Because it, it just seemed like it. But maybe it's her. I didn't know. I just wanted to know for sure. So I said, okay, dear Roro, please call me. Here's my phone number. And I gave it to her. And she called me. And we talked for like two hours. I mean, on and on and on. She had all kinds of questions because, of course, they'd made it sound so wonderful. And I understood that. You know, and I said, you know, I know that that's exactly how I was too. And good evening, ma'am. That's nice from Chubbs 0, 0.0. That's nice. Oh, you guys are wonderful. Um, anyway, we talked and we talked and we talked. And I said, look, you know, their big thing is money. That's it. That's, that's really what they're going to be after with you. And I know they're nice. And I know Tom Cruise is, can be very charming. But believe me on this, it's money. That's what they're after. So and I give her all kinds of stories and stuff like that. So she she hangs up the next night. She calls me and she goes, oh, my God, you wouldn't have believed what happened. And I said, what happened? And she said, they told me they were doing a big fundraiser, right? So she went to the fundraiser thinking it's a whole lot of people and ended up only being Rosie O'Donnell in the corner of a room, like a big room. She's over in the corner, surrounded by Sea Org guys, pounding her for a million dollars to donate a million dollars. They needed it and she needed to donate it. And she said, honestly, Tori, if I hadn't talked to you, I would have given them the million dollars. And it's like, that's what's so tricky about them. They're so good at that kind of thing. Guilt tripping you and making you feel like you are the only person that can handle this, whatever it is. They always come up with some big thing that they're fixing and you need to donate the money. They don't know. It just goes to David Miscavige and he buys another motorcycle or something. Yeah, it's pathetic, but they don't know that. And so she said, if I hadn't talked to you, I would have given him the million bucks. And she was pissed. By this time, now she's really, really pissed. And she goes, you know what? I'm going to make a TV show about this. And I said, okay, what do your friends say? And she said, they all say, don't do it. And I said, your friends are right. Don't do it. I said, because here's the thing. They will come after you in spades and your family and your friends. And, you know, it's just like, it's not worth it. I said, what you could do that would be much better is because you're, you know, you know, all these celebrities just start letting people know, give them xenu.net, xenu.net. That was the main website back then with all kinds of information. I said, just give them that, tell them to go read it, tell them never get in Scientology that you've learned about it. And they, they're just a scam and that's it, you know, it, it, and let them find out for themselves. So that's my story about Rosie O'Donnell and Rosie, if you happen to be seeing this, I'm so happy you didn't get into Scientology. I really am. And that's true for every celebrity. And any of the celebrities that are watching this, come on out. The, the way out, Hubbard said the way out is the way through. But his policy was the way out is the nearest door. So just look around you. There's the nearest door. Open the door. Walk out. You're free. That's it. Okay, here's a question. <laughs> How adorable was DOA when he got out of court? I know he looks so handsome, tying his own tie, looking, um, looking words they didn't know up in the dictionary. Comics and non sequitur. Okay, just so adorable. The, that judge said no. What do you mean they said no? What does that mean? They said no. They said no to about DOA? I mean, he got a whole big thing he read on video. It doesn't sound like it was no. But um, 
Tell me what you mean by just said no, because that isn't what he said. What a great story. I know. I think it's a good story, too. I thought you guys would like it. And it's a good nighttime story. You know, it's like, it's just unbelievable. Okay, so here we go. What does it say? No to La Poubelle. Um, case postponed. Oh, get get some better papers. Okay. So, in other words, so, oh, so the judge said no to her. Like, as far as this whole restraining order and stuff like that, no. I still think, I don't think La Poubelle is a good idea. I really don't. I, I think it's a, a mini setup by OSA. You know, not that they're, I, I know these people are going on their own, but I think OSA is in the background going, yay, they're over at La Poubelle. They're not talking about Scientology. They're not talking about El Rich. They're not talking about David Miscavige. This is great. You know, it's a huge win for them in that way. And um, so I always say to the guys, look, if you're going to mention Danny Masterson, don't just say Danny Masterson because nobody knows who he is except we who are in the area that know about it. So say Danny Masterson, Scientologist, rapist in prison for 30 years and two, two consecutive things of it, you know, but just say he's in prison. <clears throat> he got a continuance. That's right. That's what he got. Thank you. Thank you, Doug from Clearwater. All right. The judge was fully aware that those accusations were false and nonsense. Good, good. Oh, it's so nice when you get a judge that can honestly see how snaky these guys are. Now, what does this say? No, wait, 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 where did that go? Uh, somebody said something. I agree. I also believe that's how they're seeing this whole side quest before the testing center opens. Mm. The side quest before, seeing this whole side quest before the testing center. You know, like it's just a distraction. That's what you mean? Because I'm saying La Poubelle is like a distraction off of Scientology. So as long as they're, <clears throat> as long as they're not talking about Scientology, LRH, David Miscavige, OSA, the abuses, the front groups, all those things, any of those things, you can take any one of those things. And those are things they don't want being talked about. Mm -mm. No, no, no. Don't wait a minute. Way to happiness. They're talking about way to have No, 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 no. Yeah, you can go over and protest way to happiness. There, it's here. It's in Glendale. You can go to Narconon. You know, you can go to Criminon. You can go to, you know, Applied Scholastics, whatever. There, there's a lot of other things that can have sh shown a light on it that are really, they don't want that. They don't want people to know that. Uh, the way to happiness is really Scientology. I used to sell seminars with the Scientology business and they were like, nothing was mentioned about Scientology. And we would go do the seminars. And at the end, the head of the company would get up and say, well, um, I'm just going to read to you some management policies by L. Ron Hubbard. And people were pissed. It's like, this is Scientology shit? You know, it was just, they were like leaping off of ships, you know, like the Titanic kind of thing. It was bad. <laughs> it was really bad. So they finally had to start saying, <clears throat> just so you know, this is based on the management technology of L. Ron Hubbard. We had to say it on the phone. I said it. And people would say, no, I'm not interested. And they'd hang up. You know, it was really, it was really changed the game plan because they were kind of trying to slide in there. That's why Germany had the Ursula Coberta thing there because Ursula, that was her job to say, if you're, if you're in a business and you're a Scientologist, you have to let us know because you'll be on a list. That's how that is. You can't just slide in there. Okay. So there you go on that. Let's see if there's, <laughs> I know. All right. So let me look up. Sounds like a company I used to work for. Yeah. I know. All right. Let me just look up. Hello. Hello. I think this is a whole bunch of wonderful people that said hello. Please help hit the like button and make sure you're subscribed. Thank you. Thank you very much. Love it. Thank you. And hi from Georgia. All right, Georgia. I did it. I did one of those seminars down in Georgia. Oh God. It's scary. I'll tell you one thing. I, I, I've lived in cities all my life, you know, Chicago, New York, San Francisco here, and you can put me anywhere and I'm okay. I'm fine in a big city, but you put me out in Georgia. We went to some island, you know, far outside of Atlanta. You might know where it is, Miss Sunrise Dawn, but it was outside Atlanta. 
And I'm telling you, we were in a big fancy hotel and I thought, well, I'll just go for a walk. So I start going for a walk and pretty soon I am out. I don't know where I am. It's all green. You can't see anything. It's just forest. And you hear these people in the forest, women screaming and screaming. I mean, it was really scary. And I'm not making this up. I mean, it was like, what is going on? I'm there. And and now I realize I'm lost, right? I'm like out. I've walked a ways and I just, I'm used to streets. You know, it's like north, south, east, west. You know, I'm going here, I'm going there. I can always find my way home. But in a forest, I was like, and I'm hearing these people scream and I'm thinking they could come get me and that's it for Dory. Bah! And it was really pretty spooky. So every time I think of Georgia, I think of that time. And luckily, the security guards came and found me. And they said, don't ever, ever go for a walk anywhere without a security card here. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'll stay in L.A. <laughs> I was like, whoa, man. It's just like movie, you know, kind of shit you see on the TV. And you think, oh, that doesn't really happen. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Hello, pretty lady. Thank you. That's a nice thing to say. Thank you. And thank you for reminding me Venmo. That's right. And PayPal. There you go. And look at this name. Pootigaroo. <laughs> That's a cute name. <laughs> okay. So pay. What is this? I don't know what that is. I, I don't. That's not PayPal. I think you were guessing. That's not it. It's, it's pay, love it said it's PayPal. Here we go. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so hi, Pink. I'm PDX2, okay? You got to explain that if you're going to say it. I don't know what PDX is. Hi, neighbor Mike. Okay, so these are all, I guess, friends that know each other from online. I finally made it live. Yes, you did, Nancy Drew. That's right. Cindy. Yep, we already went over that. Good. Okay, here we go. Let's see. What did she say? Rosie used Tom Cruise as a beard, it seemed, as she was closeted saying Tom was her boyfriend, even though he was married to Nicole Kidman at the time. I don't think so. I don't agree with that, but it doesn't matter. The main thing was he was trying... He was trying to get her in and interested in. I don't think he, I don't think it was a sec, sexual thing. It, he may have been trying to use that to get her in because they do do that, and that might, you might be right on. But you know, it was like no way on that. But but as far as getting her in Scientology, it could have been. Ah, uh, thank you, Chubs. I like that. Thank you. Great storytelling. My grandfather. I told you, and my dad. Evening, Tori, and hi, everyone. All right, from philosophy. There you go, Sophie. That's right. All right. Everyone is nice when they want something. <laughs> Shh, don't tell everybody. <laughs> okay, what's this? Lieutenant Tory reporting for like button duty. <laughs> oh, okay, I don't know what that means, but I guess you're 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 reminding people to press the like button. Thank you. And, and that's a very good idea. Thank you. You guys are very helpful. You saved Rosie's money and heartache. You're, you're right. I mean, it would have been a mess for her. It would have been really, really bad. So I felt really great when I talked to her. And she was so happy the next day. It was like, thank God I talked to you. I was like, I know. I could see it. You know, it's different. You could see it. You, can, you go, uh-oh, this is not going to be good. That's so sickening how they just drain people of their money. It is. It really is. It's one of the biggest, I mean, besides breaking up families, which I hate, and stopping free speech, you know, it's, you know, ripping them off for their money and medical abuse. I mean, you see every every video you hear my, what happened because of the medical abuse they did with me, where I can't remember things. That That's from that. That's directly from that. And that I'm going to have for the rest of my life. And I would sue them, except Hubbard said, get them in court, keep them in court, bankrupt them. And that was part of it. And the other part was kind of a personal thing, but I just didn't, I thought, no, I'm not going to do it. I know these guys, they're weasels, they're snakes, and uh, they have a lot of money. And 
I, I just didn't want to do it. I didn't want to spend the rest of my nights. I knew Larry Wallersheim. He did win $8 million, but even then half of it was cut and then some lady took a bunch of it. So it was, and it took him 20 years, you know, it took him 20 years to get that. And, and to me, I don't want to spend 20 years doing that. I just don't. Okay. So we mentioned the thing about DO, DOA being adorable, which yes, he was. Um, no, I didn't meet Rosie. She, she, I sent her, Spanky sent her my, I, I perceived that she was getting roped in by Tom Cruise. So Sp I called Spanky. She sent my article that Tony Ortega had done, um, on sympathy for the devil, which you can Google it's, it's online. And Tony wrote it and it was about Andreas and I, cause that is a beautiful story. So anyway, there's that. And, um, where was I? I don't know. I can't remember. But, um, oh, yeah, you said, did I meet her? And um, I didn't meet her personally, physically, but I, she, you know, she, I ended up having her call me because I didn't really know if Roro was really Rosa, Rosie O'Donnell or not. So she called me and we talked and it was really good. And it really helped her the next day, not fork over the money. That's what she said. She said, I was, I would have, I would have given them the million bucks and she was going to do a TV show exposing them. But I asked her, well, what are your friends saying? She said, none of them want me to do it. They've watched Scientology. They know they'll come after them. And I said, yeah, I'm kind of with your friends. I agree. You'd be way more effective to just tell other celebrities not to do it and how creepy they are. You know, give them the Xenu.net website because that's a great website. Anyway, uh, he got a continuance. Thank you. That's good to know. And the judge, I think we said this, was fully aware of the accusations were false. That's so great. That is really great. Okay. I agree. I also believe that's how they're seeing the whole... Okay. That's right. Yes, man. The testing center is open. Oh, my God. And they're recalling... They're recruiting differently right now. I bet. I bet they are. I'm going to go over and see him this weekend. I, I, I got my own plans. And you can prepare for it, Scientology. The way to happiness is outside of the org. Is outside of the org? Um, Sophie, there's actually, there is a way to happiness building that it functions out of. So yes, they give away the way to happiness booklets, but there are people that run it and they're in Glendale. Or they were the last time I knew. So there you go. If they've changed and they don't have that anymore, let me know. Anyway, uh, sounds like a company I used to work for. That's funny. Wow, what a great story about Rosie. Oh, good. You remember her talk show. She just loved her some Tom Cruise. She, she loved Tom Cruise. She really did. So that was the right person to get on. But boy, she was going for it, too. It was. Um, oh, okay. Hi, Andrew. Got here too late for the story. Got to go back and listen. Yeah. I, I don't want to keep telling it over and over because a couple of people came in late. Uh, Nancy Drew is a business, not a religious organization helping the community. That's an understatement. It's outrageous that they have tax exemption. It is. It really is. You have to pay now to say you are a Scientologist. Literally. To say, I'm a Scientologist. You have to be part of the International Association of Scientologists, which originally Hubbard sold to me and everybody else as the HASI membership, the Hubbard Association International. And we paid for it, or Hubbard Association of Scientologists International. That was it. And I think we paid a thousand bucks and it was a lifetime membership. So now when Miscavige took over, he's like, all right, that's done. We're doing the IAS. And so I go across the street after the event and I said, what the hell is this? You know, I have a lifetime membership with Hubbard. And she goes, you're an auditor, right? And I said, yeah. And she goes, you know, you auditors are the only people that are coming over here asking that question. I said, that's because we've been drilled forever. If it isn't in writing, it isn't true. And Miscavige has nothing in writing. Nothing, nothing, nothing just in case some Scientologists are watching it, he has nothing that he has changed that's in writing. He isn't, the FN, no, 
Come on. Oh, that really pisses me off because I lived through that. It was awful. <clears throat> okay, anyway, thank you, Philosophy, for bringing that up. And uh, Nancy Drew. I don't think we have them in Oklahoma. <laughs> Bless your days if you don't. I remember when I went to Norway, I said to Andreas, let's go see the Scientology scene. You know what he said? Why? It's just a doorbell. <laughs> I laughed so hard. Um, okay, we already went over that about the trouble that the CEO guy will be subjected to. I can't tell you. You know, we'll see what Miscavige comes up with or anybody who's running it. Um, what island was that? I don't... This is kind of an odd question. What island was that? Do you think I I know what you're talking about? Because I don't. If you're talking to someone else, put the at sign, because then they'll know what you're talking about, because I don't. Um, okay, there's an at sign. Hi, Tori. How's my favorite spy? Thank you. CIA agent. Let's get it straight. Undercover CIA agent. Love your laugh, Tori. Thank you very much. I like laughing. I do. Um, let's see. You really learned this stream, Tori. <laughs> I'm laughing because I feel like such a nerd. You know, I'm I'm getting it. And this part of it, I you're right. I'm getting this part of it I have. But there's other stuff that I need to know and I don't. And so I'm getting there. I am. And thank you for acknowledging that. I appreciate that, Caroline. I do. Because you forget that you are doing some of it right. You know, because when, when you're learning something new, you know, it's like all of this seems like so much that you forget, well, wait a minute, this is pretty big too. You know, it is. So thank you. Thank you very much. That means a lot to me. It really does. Okay. Here's somebody swearing. Damn, I'm late. I'll have to do back and rewatch. Love hearing and listening to your stories. Hello from Georgia again. This is another Georgia person. Okay. Well, there you go. Okay. Uh, great, great live with Mark and Janice earlier today. I did. We did a live stream thing and they didn't know how to hook it onto my YouTube so you guys could see it. Um, but anyway, there you go. We did it. Uh, was your husband or your son ever a, in Scientology? Mostly my husband. He was born in it. His parents got in in 1950. So I met him on course. That's where I met him. And uh, I never really thought he wasn't like a big true believer like me. Because I think he was born into it. It was like, all right, whatever. They're doing this Scientology stuff. You know, it just wasn't a big deal for him. And I was a trained auditor and he, he got trained, but his mother kind of moved him up the bridge. So he is OT8, but that's only because she kept paying and pushing him up the bridge. That was it. He, he probably would have never done any of it if he had his own way. That's what I think, but I don't know. Um, sounds like you're talking about St. Simeon Island. There's also, I don't know. I, oh, I see it the island with near Georgia. Okay, thank you, Miss Sunshine Dawn. Thank you for telling me that. No, it wasn't St. Simeon. It might have been St. Simeon. It might have been. Yeah, it might have been. Oh, is that closer to the other one's closer to this? Is St. Simeon near Georgia? Because I think that might be it. Yeah. Anyway, it was it was spooky. It was really spooky. I was like, no, I will never be living here. Um, but even though the cities are pretty, they are classic honey pot tactics, right? Hey, Tori and chat. What's your Zodiac sign? I'm a cancer. And I don't know about the chat and I don't think we're going to stay on long enough for everybody to say what they are. Not sexual, just for TV use and coverage. Yeah, that's what, that's what I thought. Yeah. Psychopaths are also very nice too. True. I know that, Drew. Okay. I feel like if you were a school teacher, you'd be the kind of teacher that would be loved by all our students. Oh, thank you. I was a school teacher. I taught two-year-olds at Apple School, and I taught sixth grade in Mace Kingsley. I taught Danny Masterson just for a very short time. He was there. But I'll tell you a funny Danny Masterson story. He's at, he's at Mace Kingsley, right? 
And and that's a whole different thing. I've got to tell a whole different story about that because the whole thing was a mess. But um, he's carrying around a suitcase. This is sixth grade. And I'm like, Danny. And he was in modeling at the time. You know, like now he's an actor, but he was, or was, now he's in prison. But he was in acting. But before that, he was in modeling. His mother got him into modeling. And so he's carrying around this suitcase. And I'm like, okay, what's the deal with the suitcase? And he said, I'm making money. And I said, you're making money in sixth grade? What What are you selling? And he goes, comic books. And I said, and how much do you make a day? And I'm thinking, you know, 50 cents, maybe a couple of bucks. A hundred dollars a day. He's making in school while the kids are there selling his comic books. I was like, whoa. It was very weird. Anyway, I was there. I was only there for a short time, but it did work out. All the parents called me and said, thank you so much because their kids had really wigged out. I forget where they were, but they, they, they all had kind of flipped out and turned into kind of like these gang members, right? I'll just tell you this story. So by the time, I'm trying to think, by the time I get to, I had put my son and Mace Kingsley in the school here. He was in Apple School, then he was in Delphi. Then he was in Cam's school, which was Doug Hogg's school. And then he wanted to leave there. And I said, okay, I'll come pick you up. So now I put him in, but no, before Doug Hogg, that was it. He's at Delphi. And then all Delphi kicked out a lot of these kids because they were just crazy. And my son wasn't crazy, but those were his friends. So he wanted to go with him. So I said, okay, so we'll transfer over there. It costs a lot of money. I mean, these Scientology schools are expensive. It's like private education, right? And so I get, after a very short time, my son isn't learning anything, right? And so I get on this and I go down to watch the class just for a day. And they have a thing where... You have roll call. Maybe I told you guys this. Did I already tell this? Let, wait, let me look in the new comments because maybe I already, I already told this. Do, do you want to hear it or not? EBC is about 30 minutes south of Altadena. Oh, you're talking to someone else. Okay. Maybe Tybee Island. No, I think the one that you said, the original one was the one that was. Um, okay. So you guys, your cancer, Iowa. Okay. So you guys are all... You haven't told this. Okay. Do you want to hear it though? Do you guys want to hear it or should I do it another time? I'm just going to sit here and wait and see. You're going to have to let me know if you want to hear it or not. It's sort of about the crazy kids and me teaching. Anyway, it's short. Don't worry about it. Okay. Nobody, they, they didn't say they want to. So, Okay, Nancy said she wants to. All right, we got somebody who wants to. Okay, Nancy, all right, and Cindy does. All right, Ariel does. All right, I'm going to tell you. There you go. It's Magoo at midnight. What the hell? So, okay, so these kids get thrown out of Delphi, and they go over to Mace Kingsley, and I go in to see what's going on because I don't feel like my son is learning and this guy is calling roll call. He's like, all right, it's roll call. Meaning he's going to call their names and they're just supposed to sit and answer their names. And they're all throwing spitballs across the room. <laughs> they're like, you know, talking and yelling. And this one girl's got scotch tape all over her face. And I mean, it's just like a zoo, right? And, and I go home and I write up to Debbie, who owned the school, and I see this is out of control. I don't know what you're thinking of with this guy running this school, but he's not. And the kids are completely out of control. And she says, okay, so you go in and tell him you're going to apprentice him. This is this was her email to me. So I'm like, okay. So I go in and I say, uh, just so you know, Debbie wanted me to apprentice you. And I figure, all right, I'll sit around and give him a couple of tips, right? That was my plan. The guy just be like <laughs> So, all right, that's it. Out of here. <laughs> he just quit like that. He was like, bah! <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, unbelievable. You know, it just was unbelievable to me. So I write it up to De Debbie and she goes, okay, then you take it over. You, you take over. Now, wait a minute. What's going on here with Sophie? Sophie, what's up? Are you, 
Do you have a question or anything? All right, let me just make sure. Tori and then uh, okay. Okay, love what you do with the Doug's content and hope you do more. Okay, Doug's content. I love what you do with Doug's content and I hope you do more. Doug who? Doug? Who is, who, who are they talking about? Okay, I love what you did. That's Corn Freak. I love that name. Love what you do with Doug's content and hope you do more. All right, well, you have to tell me what that is. Give me like an example or something. Anyway, in the meantime, I'm there. I say, I, I go, okay, that's it. I make a big sign because it was sort of like Grand Central Station at the school. The parents, kids, people are going in and out. And I thought, all right, that's it. Okay, thank you. Love it. So I put up a big sign that says, the only people that are allowed in here are the students, the parents, and me, period. And now I take over the class. And this is why I'm sort of like, well, maybe they love me, maybe not. This is what happened. I said, okay, okay, you guys, most of you I have known since you were two years old. That's true. And I said, and at that time, you were, oh, Doug Kramer. Oh, bless his heart. Hi, Doug. Oh. He was a good guy. I'm so sorry he passed away. Anyway, I know. I miss him. I really miss him. Okay, so back to the story. Oh, yeah. I'm going to take over the class. So I say, okay, fine. I know you guys since you were two, most of you, the majority of the class. And I said, so when I call roll call, it's not going to be like that guy. Anybody doing a spitball, yelling, laughing, doing anything weird, you're going to be kicked out. And I mean it. I mean business. And I will do it. So when I say start, I mean start. When I call them, when I say it's roll call, we're going to start roll call. That means it's time to get serious on, on learning, right? And so they're all kind of sitting there like, okay. And I started on the names and these six kids start doing this, this, and this, and this. And I'm like, all right, you out. And they're like, no, no, I didn't do you out. And I just, I kicked out six kids in 10 minutes. It was just like, you're out, you're out, you're out. <clears throat> and the whole room kind of calmed down after that. I said, see, that's the difference. And that, it was still kind of weird. There was like one kid that I knew was a bad kid and they're not really bad kids but they were doing bad shit and his intention was to just stir up stuff and i knew it and so i'm watching him i'm watching him and finally after about a week he he stands up he picks up a chair and just smashes it on the desk and i look around at everybody and i go you know what that's a wrap and i go get out and everyone to this day go well what happened to the skids and i go i have no idea it was not, I have a thing, NMP, not my problem. And you know what? It was NMP. You know, you. I gave them a warning. I told them what I was going to do. And they still violated it. You're out. That's it. And the whole, within a month, but within a week, the kids were like, we're so great. We're doing so much better. Can we get pizza? And I said, look, remember, I know you guys since you were two. And yes, I agree. And I acknowledge you're better. But you can be better than that. And when you all are better, then we're going to have pizza. And within a month, they all were better. We did have pizza. And all of these parents started calling me, thank you so much. I thought I lost my son and now he's back. And I lost my daughter and now she's back. And it was just, it was a wonderful thing to experience. It really was. And that was the other thing. I had done a bunch of research on children that were really hyper and stuff like that. And Every, th this book was really serious on, technically, Tori is a NMP. Those people are important too. NMP, not my problem. Okay, Tori is a not, not NMP. I don't get what that means. Technically, Tori is an, not my problem. Well, I use that. If, if something is not my problem, that's what I like about Tori. Okay, yeah, it's like I'm not going to take up I'm not going to let people just junk up an area. Like that happened originally with YouTube. People, Yachty and gang were on my YouTube site right away. And I started blocking people. And, 
you know, someone else I know was very against it. I was like, no, no, you shouldn't do that. That's against free speech. And I said, you know what? This is a safe space where people can talk and communicate amongst themselves. That's what I want. I don't want just, I know Osa's goal is to just slime the area and make it so shitty, nobody will want to become there. And that guy no longer has a YouTube site. That's what happened. It's exactly what I said. That's exactly what happened. So it's like, you kind of have to stay on it and go, no, mm -mm, not doing that here. That's what, that's what moderators are for. It's like, no, 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 no. You know, like if Osa comes in, mm -mm, no, we'll give him a warning, but then see you later, Gator. That's the way it is. Um, I do love children and it's so beautiful. Oh, that's nice. Thank you, Sophie. Tori really loves children. It's so beautiful how you speak about young people. I really do care about them. You know, it's one of those things where I think so often if each of us would talk to kids and, and, and just take the time to talk to them, it, their lives could be majorly different. I, I had some, I won't say who, but I knew someone in my community and they their son was on Facebook. And he was talking about killing himself. He didn't say it in those words, but I could tell from what he was saying, this is this is going down, down, down. He was like super lonely, super alone, no friends, all this stuff. And I just, I sent him a thing. I said, get over to my house now. You know, like I want to see you within the next couple of days. You've got to be in my house. Because remember James, who, who did shoot himself to death, he and I you know, we're trying to get together, but it didn't happen. And, and he's dead, you know, so I always think of that. I go, don't, if you think somebody needs help, get it now, not, not tomorrow, not a week from now, get it now. So I told the kid, I said, get over here. And, you know, I talked to him about all these kids that I knew that committed suicide and they're all from about 18 to 26. That's the big worst age bracket. You know, once you get through that age bracket, I just, it's just a tricky age. And if you just know that's the age, you know, you just have to keep moving on and you'll be okay. You know, all, whatever you feel, everybody else is just as shitty as you are at that age. <laughs> I tell kids that all the time because it's true. And um, you know what? He's getting married. I'm so happy. I, I saw these pictures of him and he's getting married. And I thought, oh, God, thank goodness I talked to him. Not that I was the only one that did, but for every person that did, look what we ended up doing. It's it's really great. Okay, so, um, okay, so these guys are, okay, let's see what this is. I value hearing from young people. They really can educate us when we're not too arrogant to listen. Man, that's the truth. I'm telling you, these young kids, the, the live streamers, I mean, they have a whole different way of doing things than, than I'm used to. But I'm learning. I'm learning. And Laura gave me this little T-shirt. Proud declared SP. There you go. All right. So um, what does this one say? <laughs> Cute, Tori. All right. Cute. All right. This is from Sophie. Love it. Just linked it. All right. Okay. So that must be something cool that she's, let me see what it is. All right. So this is, okay. So love it. Love it. Copied it. All right. There you go. That's what it is. I don't know what it is. It's probably a music thing, is it? I think. That's what I like about Tori. Oh, what do you like about me? Oh, okay. All right, so thank you. I absolutely love listening to you while working away. Thank you so much for your company. You are welcome. I just hope I'm not getting you in trouble with your work, but I think you're probably doing good. Tori is such a special person. Thank you, Sophie. I feel the same way about all of you guys. And I definitely feel special about love it now that I met her. We had a great time together. She's she's a very cool person. Subscribe and check out Tori's old videos. You'll learn so much and enjoy endless Tori cuteness. I know I, I believe in having fun. So I, I think Scientology is such a heavy, hardcore subject 
that you got to have some fun and goofiness in it. So I think I started with Mr. Anonymous and, you know, just goofy things like that. But it's it's been fun. And a lot of people from all different cults have gotten out watching my videos and others. So it's it's important. Not that Karen. Oh, that's cute. That's a cute name. Not that Karen. Wait, where'd it go? No, that's not it. Oh, okay. There's the, uh, not that Karen. Good evening, Tori. You're so nice. Thank you. All right. Um, okay. I just love hearing people who advocate for and appreciate children and young people. It's, a, it's important. It is. And, you know, the thing that's so important is that, you know, it just takes a little bit, you know, it's, it's like, they, they, it's a tough time to be a little kid and, and to grow up. It is, especially as a teenager, it's a, it's a tough time. It is. And, you know, your parents are trying to help you, but you're, of course, never listening to your parents. So that's tricky. So that's the way I look at it. Like, we're their parents. And I just look at it that way. It's like anybody where I see them and they need help, I'm going to be there because, I know that I know me. I didn't listen to my parents and I should have, but I didn't. And nobody stepped in and said, you know what? You really should listen to your parents. They know what they're talking about. That's all it would have taken. And I would have done it, but I didn't, you know, they, they never did. And it, it, my whole life went a whole different way because of that. And also they moved, they moved from Park Ridge, which was my favorite place. So there you go. All right. Um, what I was saying is according to the, According to the Birch, you're an NMP, but imagine if nobody cared about you. You disrupted black blackness and kindness. Wow, that's like, all right, you're going to have to explain that to me. What I was saying is according to the Birch, which I don't know what the Birch is, <clears throat> you're an NMP, which is not my problem or something else. But imagine if nobody cared about you. You disrupted blackness with kindness. Yeah, I did. I mean, I went through a period where very few people, I mean, I think for 24 hours, Andreas was the only person that cared about me when I woke up. And that was spooky. I'm telling you, it was very, very spooky. It, it, and it's not something I would wish on anybody, but thank God he was there. And it really taught me you never know the value of offering someone a hand. Let me give you a hand. You know, it's like, wow. And he didn't either. You know, he just thought he was just talking to me. He had no idea the effect he was having on my life at all. It was kind of amazing. Yeah, not my problem, an MP, right? Okay. All right, good. So does anybody have any other questions before I end off? I just wanted to tell you my my Rosie O'Donnell story tonight. So did you like them? That's the other thing. Yes, it is. And even made my DOA cry when he cried. Okay. Hey, Tori. Hi. All right. Now, what is this? Yes, it is. And he even made, D oh, DOA cry when he cried. Oh, it even made DOA cry when he cried. It was very touching. Aw. Aw. Sweet. Very sweet. Wonderful group of people, really. I'm very honored to be, to know all of you. And, you know, I don't really know you, know you, but I'm getting to know you. And I, it's, it's really special for me. It is. I mean, it's. I've always said the internet has, has truly been a lifesaver for me, truly, since 2000, because I lost all my friends. You know, I had no friends. Now I have a whole group of friends, but it took a long time. It did. And, and you know, it would have been, it would have been pretty spooky without the internet. I love the stories. I love your glass half full outlook on life. You remind me more you, to be more positive. Yeah. It, it's a much better way to live. It just is. You're happier. You know, it's like, think about it. The glass is half empty. And I lived with a guy for seven years like that. And I love the guy. And he ended up passing away. But boy, I I really saw how it works. And it's, it's a bummer. You know what I mean? It is. I mean, he did, he had real serious clinical depression. So he was like fighting off that blackness, which a lot of people don't have that. They just they just kind of get into like, ah, it's shitty. And, 
everything's bad. And no, it isn't. You know, it really isn't. It isn't. It, it is. There's a lot of shit. There's a lot of shit happening. But there's a lot of good things too. And we have to be like adventurers and find the different things that are good things that make us happy and make other people happy and help them too. And that'll make you happy. That's the way it is. That's the way I believe. All right. No, wait. The sun has started to rise here. Wow. Great start of the day. You are welcome. Musical magpie. Cool. Wow. Where are you? All right. Now here's a question. Wait, 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 wait. Did I get it? No, I missed it. Ah, why well, want to go up? Okay, now wait, here's a question. Does CFS warn all members and orgs about the protesters, or is it a need-to-know basis? It is a good question and totally a need-to-know basis. No, they don't really warn them. <clears throat> My favorite story on that, I was on course at ASHO, and I had already been out handling these critics for years. So I knew the whole drill. And Keith Henson was outside at the complex with one sign. That was it. That's all he had. And they had sent me out to try to get rid of him. I couldn't. But anyway, I, I knew who he was. So now I'm on course. It's 6 o'clock. We're all supposed to be able to go home at 6 o'clock. And the supervisor comes out and he goes, all right, that's it. That's it. Everybody stop in the hall. Just stop. Everybody, stop, 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 stop. And I'm like, okay, what's this about? And he goes, this is a mandatory briefing. I've got to tell you this. And so we're all standing there like, oh, God, what is this now? And, you know, it was some bullshit thing that just was a reason to keep us inside until they could get Keith somehow around the corner or something so people would see his Zenu.net sign. Anyway, there you go. I I like the live streams too. It's really fun. So no, they don't really warn them. And they, they try to really keep it under cover. Oh, and this is nice. Thank you so much for your time. Everything you've done and all you will do is so important and appreciated beyond measures. Thank you very much. Nothing but love. That's nice. That's a good Nick. I like that. All right. Corn Freak, I love that name. All right. Okay, so that... Um, oh, I'm sorry to hear this. Maybe we can help him. Ariel, my son has been hard to convince that life is worth living, and I've never experienced anything so mentally stunting. Clinical depression is confusing and serious. You're right. It is. It really is. The only thing I can tell him, you know, that you can tell him that I think really would help is just take it a day at a time and let him know that he is not alone, that a lot of people, younger people have a very hard time. They feel very left out. And, you know, they see these people that are making millions of dollars that are their age and they're like, well, that's not working for me, but something will work for them. Do you know what I mean? The other thing is TED Talks. Go on TED Talks, Corn Freak and look up different things because there are people that speak that are professional, they're trained in this and they know how to talk and, and give you tips on stuff to do. Cause you, you really need to, I, you probably are doing a bunch, but t I love Ted talks. I mean, honestly, if you need advice on anything, you just type in Ted talks plus, you know, whatever confidence. And they, they've got people there talking about confidence and they, a lot of them have really good advice. It's amazing. I'm glad you learn a lot from my stream. Somebody said that on it. There you go. I like that. I'm glad you do. Yeah, I'm sorry, Corn Freaks. That, 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 that's a, a bummer. It really is. But I know that um, I know that he can get through it. He can. Tori's been speaking out for 24 years for free. It's true. <laughs> if you'd like to send her some love, so, uh, she's so appreciative. No pressure, of course. Cash app, which is uh, pound or money sign Tori Christman, or PayPal, which is paypal.me with my name spelled wrong, <laughs> which was DOA. <laughs> You'll never live it down. <laughs> anyway, you can't change it. They won't let me change it. So, 
Anyway, it doesn't matter. You just click on the link. But if you can, I would appreciate it. And thank you. Thank you very much. Love it. And thank you for being a moderator. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate you guys all coming here. I used to check that, oh, that he was breathing. Oh, this is this is a big one, corn freak. I used to check that he was breathing same as when he was a baby, but he was bigger than me. Oh, I'm so sorry you're having to go through that. It, it, kids are, being a parent is a tough thing. It is. It, it, it can be. It can be wonderful, but it can also be very hard, and especially that kind of thing. But you know what? He's alive today, and that's a good thing. And you can tell him that every day. You know what? You're alive today. That's a good thing. That makes me happy. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank you again. You know what? I know you don't want to hear it. You can walk into your other room. That's okay. But thank you. Thank you for being alive today. I appreciate it. That's what I think. That's what I would tell. If I had a son who was very, very depressed, I would, every day, I would do some gratitude stuff with him. I'd walk around with him. I'd take him for walks. You know what? Come on. Let's go. We're going for a walk. I don't want to. I don't feel like, I don't give a shit. Get, get your ass out of bed. Come on. Come with me. Come on. We're going to go for a walk. And, and, you know, find some pretty places that you know he'd like and take them there. You know, it's it, it's it's a tricky thing. And I know it's easy to say. My dad used to say Monday morning quarterbacks are a dime a dozen, Tori. And, you know, that's what I'm being now. And I apologize. I do. Because it's, it's none of my business. And you're the dad and you're doing it. But I just feel, and I think you're a dad, maybe you're a mom. If you're a mom, you have to let me know because Corn Freak is such a cool name. <laughs> anyway, being a parent is the most excruciating. It is. It can be. It can be. And wonderful thing at the same time. That's right. It, it's true. It is. And, and you know, it's, it's just one of those things. It really is. But I wouldn't miss it for the world. And I don't think you would either. And I've met a lot of parents from all different things. And most of us agree, you know, no matter how bad, it's it's worth it. It is. All right. So, yes, we speak every day. Good, Corn Freak. That's good. Tori. Oh, you're a mama. Okay. I thought you were a guy. I don't know why. That's such a great name, Corn Freak. Okay, good. Well, then that's good because you're his mom. That's that's even harder, though, I think. I do. I don't know why. Probably because I'm a mom. But I, I think a lot of stuff gets, you know, it's like, the responsibilities of a child often are with the mother. Not always, because a lot of times some dads, now I've met dads that are just fabulous. They're, they really have taken it on and they're, they're cool. But a lot of moms carry a lot of weight. They do a lot of stuff. I always say, you know what, let's get all these guys out of the government. All of them. They've been running the government for fucking years and screwed up our country. Let's get all the men out, put all mothers in, mothers and women that are smart, right? And I'm not saying all women are right. I'm not, because they screw up too. But give us a chance. Give us 10 years, 10 years, and then you can have it back. Give us 10 years. That's what I say. Because you know what? If we had 10 years, <clears throat> you and I know, corn, corn Freak, you and I know, we would have hunger handled within a week. I know that. We would. Housing, homeless, bullshit. We would have that that handle. There, there's so many empty buildings around that people could live in. No jobs handled within a month, two months. I mean, mothers have a different thing than guys. Guys get into all the red tape and, oh, we can't do this because of that. We can't do that. But we would all go, all right, that's it on all the red tape. It's out. Goodbye. Say goodbye to it. Everybody, go ahead, wave. Say goodbye. We don't care. We're going to put in this, this, and this until people are have a place to live. Everybody's feeding, they're, they're being fed and um, they have health, health care, you know, just like basic things until these things are in all the rest of it doesn't matter. I don't give a shit about your vote. We're going to take this over and we're going to get this going. And once it's going, then you can put it back in the whole system and you know, you guys can handle it from there. That's my, that's my policy. And that's what I've been saying since 2000. <laughs> that's what your mom says too we need their mothers in charge exactly mothers we are not going to send anybody to war i'll tell you that no we who are against war i've been protesting war since the vietnam war 
And believe me, I've been in every march in every, against every war. I'm against war because it's money making machine. That's what it is. And it's like, no, not a good thing. I don't care. You can argue about it forever, but put the moms in, the wars are going to be over. That's it. And I think we could talk to other people, other mothers in other countries and go, do you really want to do this? You know what I mean? Really? Honestly? And they probably go, ah, fuck no. You know, and it's like, exactly. That's the way we feel. You know, so let's shake hands and you take this thing and we'll take that thing and let's, I'm, here, I'm going to start this, the stopwatch and we're going to time and see how fast you can handle hun hunger. How fast do you think you can? And they go, oh, probably a week or a month or a year, whatever. You know, okay, well, we think it's this. Okay, so let's one, two, three, we're going to start, go, and you go. That's the kind of stuff that we got to do. I know. And it, it makes it fun. It's different. It's all this shit that nobody cares about. <laughs> exactly, Tori. Thank you. Anyway, that's my that's my theory on it, and I, and I'm sticking with it. I am because I know we got to get rid of these wars. We got to get people fed. We got to get them health care. We've got to get you know just all this stuff that is just stupid, idiotic stuff that you just go. We are the wealth one of the wealthiest countries in the world. All these billionaires. What the fuck are you doing? If you're listening to this by any chance, you get your ass in gear. You could, each one of them could take one thing. I'm going to handle homeless. Okay, I've got like a billion dollars is, I think something like a thousand million, right? It's like a ton of money. Google Mark Cuban. He has some great educational videos on YouTube about being a billionaire. And it, I've been watching him because it's really fascinating. But, you know, they could take a couple of their million dollars and handle, you know, okay, People who aren't eating in L.A., I'm responsible for that. You know what I mean? Like each of the billionaires could take different things. Love you, Tori. Interviewed you on a Wear Talk radio years ago. All right. Cool. Hi, Chad, Lily. Well, that's fun. It's fun to see somebody that interviewed me a long time ago. And here I am still. Can you believe it? Still. And these Scientologists are still doing their abusive stuff. It's like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Here we go. I like this. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. That's why I'm in school for social justice in my late 40s. Good. 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 Yes. Money where the mouth is. All right. That's exactly right. All right. So there you go. Exactly. <laughs> All right. 5% of the population, right, owns 95% of the nation's wealth. So, you know, how stupid is that? It's just stupid. And I mean, it's different if everybody was handled. Like I went to Norway and I'm telling you, I don't care. I know Americans. I've talked to thousands of people now. Like, oh, they have to pay really high taxes. And I'm like, you know what? If you could live like how a Norwegian lives, you would pay any amount of taxes you had to pay. Who cares? I mean, they are the happiest people I have ever met, ever. I didn't even know people were like that. I mean, I, my parents were happy and, you know, my brother is happy, but, and I have friends that are happy, but this is a civilization that is happy. Do you know what I mean? Where they, and I said to Andreas, I don't get it. What is it? And he said, Tori, we take care of people from birth to death. So they don't have to worry about if they want to go to college, we pay for it. If they want to get trained in athletics, we pay for it. You know, it's sort of like every little thing. If you want to be a musician, they'll pay for it. Now you can say, yeah, but you have to pay a lot of taxes. Who cares? If, you, if you've got health care and everything else, I know there's snags in everything. I know that. That's why my brother and I call each other snaggle, because there's snags in everything. But there's good things, too. And you've got to remember that. you got to get over the snags and into the good things. That's what, that's what I think. You know, so my, my, my sight is on hope and on health. And on happiness. And that, that's what I believe. I, I want people to live a better life every day. And it and it does take every day. And it does take a community, I think, of friends getting together. Because all of us, let's face it, slubs on a sweatshirt. What does that mean? What does that mean? Slubs on a sweatshirt? I don't know what that means. 
Whatever happened to Stacey Young? I watched her interviews for years, loved hearing her stories. I know. I don't know what happened to her. She vanished. So I, I, I honestly don't know. I know that she lived. She moved um, to Ireland and then Bob died. Then she moved back and I saw her in San Diego about five years ago. And then in one of my other videos, someone said, <clears throat> someone said she's in Georgia with her family. And that's my guess. She's probably with her family. That's my guess. Yeah. H-H-H. <laughs> Hope, help, and happiness. I like that. That's good. The three H's. I don't know what that means. The slub. Slub is a word. What does that mean? I have to write it out. Let me write it down. Slub. I'll look it up. Slub. All right. And then H H H. Now, what was H H H? Hope. I like that. See, hope, help, and happiness. There you go. See. Don't you think if we we all worked on that? You know, it'd be good. I'm going to do a video every day. Okay, so here we go. Love it. Onyx, please include the context in your comments. Thank you. Yeah, because otherwise we don't know what slub means. You've got to tell us what it means. Thank you. Thank you. Love it. So anyway, I'll look it up. I'll Google it. But there you go. So anyway, it's now 11. It's almost 11.15 here. Wait a minute. Here's Corn Freak. Uh-oh, she's disagreeing. I have, oh, she has a degree that got me, no, wait, I have a degree that got me debt, no, but no career. I took 15 years getting a four-year degree, one to two classes at a time while working with kids in school. It helped me understand my upbringing better, at least. Yeah. I'm kind of big now on not doing the college thing because of that. Because so I know so many kids that end up with huge debt. And the other thing is there's not a lot of jobs. You know, so it, it, it's like I tell kids now, do research, find out in five to 10 years what's still going to be a job, right? Because of AI and stuff like that. And then get trained in a trade because trades – they only take like six to eight months to get trained in, maybe a year. But then you can hang your shingle out and you can get paid for something that you can do. And then if you want to at night or morning or whenever, then you can work on your own special projects that you want to do. But at least then you have your money covered that way. Whereas the big four-year college thing, it's so expensive and it takes so long to pay it off. It's it's. I don't think it's worth it because of the jobs, the way they are, the scarcity. Okay, so anyway, here's, here's, and I became a family ghetto therapist bachelor in behavioral sciences. Well, good for you. Good for you. You're probably helping more people than you know. Or just go to college for a hard, hard sciences, physics, chemistry, biology, and medicine. I guess it's, I would never do physics. I would never do chemistry. I would never do biology. And I didn't do medicine. That's how I got in the cult. Cause I thought, I don't want to do this. It's going to take forever. So maybe if people want to do that and they think they can stick with it. Yeah. But you got to kind of find something you, you want to do. So that's the thing. I honestly never felt like I was okay enough to help others yet. Okay. Well, I doubt if that's true. You know, you probably help people every day and maybe you're not getting paid to help people yet, but you're probably helping people. That's what I think. How could you have a name corn freaks and not help people? It's just too cute. You are. All right. Here's a question. I don't think I can answer it. What do you think about Michael Chan, the C of S preacher and his superpowers? I know nothing about it. Nothing. So I'm sorry, I don't. Um, but the good jobs only accept a degree. Not true. I know people that have good jobs that don't have a degree and they make a lot of money. So I know what you're saying. It's true. It doesn't hurt to have a degree. But if you're going to have to spend years getting out of debt in something and there's going to be no jobs, nah. Tori, please tell the viewers what happened when you asked our waitress about Scientology. 
trying to remember what happened. Um, I think I always, wherever I eat, I always tell people, I was in a cult, I escaped out, you're young, don't get in. And she, I think she, I, I forget, remind me what it was, because I forget. I know she was happy talking to us, and I think she, the waitress's dad is a Scientologist. Right, that's right. Her dad is a Scientologist. So I gave her my little card, you know, that has the, um, where is it? I had it here. Anyway, I showed you the card, you know, my card with the different websites on it so that she could look it up and find the facts that back up her not wanting to be a Scientologist. But it's tricky. <clears throat> when you have that family dynamic, it's very tricky. All right. So anyway, is there anyone else who has any questions before I say good night? But thank you, love it. Thank you for asking me about that. That was kind of fun. We had a good time. We really did. And Love It has a really great website. You, if you want, you can type your website in here. Because she, she does jewelry. She sells jewelry. And she's very cool on it. You know, it's it's like, it's really pretty. It's pretty stuff. Do you think Stacey Young, wait. I think Stacey Young and Jesse Prince just got tired of fighting everything for so long. I have to be. I can't speak for him. I know Jesse talked to me recently and he saw our protest and he said, I'm coming to the next one. So, you know, Je Jesse's a warrior at heart. He is. I, I don't know what happened with Stacy. I can't speak for her. But you are welcome, Chubbs. Good night and thank you. And philosophy, I'm glad you love it. Thank you. I'm, I'm starting a new store. All right, I'll share soon. Okay, good. Yeah, so that's good because she has really pretty stuff. Um, did you see the Sea Org member get arrested in Denver this morning? <laughs> it's about the fifth person who's asked me. No, I haven't seen it, but I've heard about it from everybody else. And uh, I don't know what's going to happen to him because everybody wants to know. But I'm sure it's going to be some, I would think it's going to be some kind of lower condition or the RPF. I have no idea. I, I don't know what's going to happen to the guy. I, he was arrested. I don't know. I don't I don't really know the whole story, so I can't tell you. All right. It's 2.15. Good night. Go to bed, Ariel. All right. The university degrees have become a money-making machine. Exactly. Good night, Patrick. Good night, you guys. You're a wonderful group of people. Thank you for coming here. Thank you for being part of this. I love all of you. Good night. All right. And you're welcome for answer for me answering your questions your question. Been following you forever, ma'am. Aw, I like that. Thank you for speaking so personally to chat. It's really appreciated. You're very welcome. And thank you guys for think of questions that you want to ask because that's good too. That helps. It does because I, I, you know, I don't want to just not talk about things that you guys want to know about. So that helps too. And as soon as I hit end stream, you can go on there and just, because usually there's nothing, you know, or a couple of comments or something. But I thought, you know, that's where you guys could type any questions or topics that you would like me to talk about or anything like that, unless you want to keep it inside here. Good night. Catch you on the flip side. That's right. This is my last one for tonight. So peace out. I love you guys. And thank you for the final time. I really appreciate it. All right. Good night.